All righty. Let's just start with a big inhale, opening chest, lungs, heart, reaching out and up. Feeling into your own body. So I'm actually seated right now and I'm just going to spiral a little bit from my seat, growing up and away. Oh, and look at my fabulous new haircut. It is never too late to be a teenage punk rock boy. Although I kind of identify as that <laughs> anyway. So let's um, let's start standing and we're going to do breathing, inhaling six counts up and six counts down. Then we're going to change it to exhale six counts up and six count down. So this is coherent breathing, which is really great for making your body coherent. And that means your blood flow, your breath flow, your respiratory, circulatory, endocrine, all those things are working together. So you're not working against yourself. It's a good thing in life to learn how to come into harmony with yourself. All right, so we're gonna exhale everything out and then inhale up. One, two, three, four, five, six, get long, exhale down. Two, three, four, five, six, inhale up. Two, three, four, five, six, exhale down, two, three, four, five, six, inhale up, arching your upper back, five, six, exhale down, two, three, four, five, six, inhale, stay down, two, three, four, five, six, exhale up, two, three, four, five, six, inhale down, two, three, four, five, six, exhale up, two, three, four, five, six, inhale down, two, three, four, five, six, exhale up, two, three, four, five, Six, inhale down, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so we don't want to get too habituated in how we are inhale, like that we always inhale up and exhale down or that we, you know, that we always do things in a certain way. Let's rub our hands together. We're going to do the limp flush. I don't think I've done this in here for a little while. Right hand to your upper left collarbone, getting in so that you're kind of, moving the tissue that's around it. Sometimes people barely touch, get in there, get in there, move underneath, unless your body is so sensitive that you can barely touch it. But you want to start to have a relationship where you can give your body a little bit of pressure <laughs> and then switch it to the other side. Same thing, left hand to the right, pushing in, massaging, moving that tissue around. So it can be what is above or below your clavicle, your collarbone, we're trying to get to the subclavian vein, which is the vein underneath where the lymph is draining back into your blood system. Relax your neck and tongue, up around the angle of the jaw, both hands at the same time. Ah, maybe yawn a little bit. Maybe the movement is slower up here and gentler. Feeling each part of our body doesn't have to be like the same stimulus as the rest. Like we don't need to push in at the same degree into the more tender, gentle parts of our body. Getting in there under the angle of the jaw and maybe around to the front of the jaw. Huh, moving from the inside of your body. So yawning, squishing your face, moving around. See, let's go into the face. We haven't done this for a while. So you're going to take your fingers right into just above the top of your nostril. This should be like a little indentation. Get in there, little circles, especially if you're having allergies. Push up your face, open it up. Looking really good here. Sexy time. Squish, open. And then you can just make like a little pull under your cheekbone. Two or three times. Hello face. 
And then we're gonna go with our thumbs up into our eyebrows. Shake it out, shake it out. Let's do a pull across the forehead. So we're kind of balancing and throwing in some energy work here with our lymph. And then just above, like right where your ear is joining in, in the top, little indentation there, gentle little circles, Ugh, relax your tongue. And then a little bit lower, just a little lower. Yeah, I feel like there's a couple of places down there, kind of the inside of the ear, work your way down. Shake it out, hands together one more time. 10 little dragons running through the forest, all the way down the back of your neck, around, taking it in and down. My hair is getting better and better every time I do this, right? I can go for the full on heat, my eyes are straight up. And then we're gonna do a pull up the center and down the side. So you're gonna go up the middle and down. Right brain, left brain. We're both giving both sides some attention. Shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. And come into right hand, left armpit, peck. So we're back into the lymph. We'll probably get into the thymus and K27 points. But we're lymphing now, back to the lymph. Breathe into it. You can move around. So you're moving from the inside and getting in there from the outside. Same thing on the other side. Ah, breathing. Tuning into being in your body, feeling what it feels like to be in your body right now, listening to your body. So let's come back into that K27. So just below your collarbone, there's two little indentations like on the inside. You should be able to find them. Get in there. Little circles in one direction. Try the other direction as well. It's, you'll probably find that there's one direction that feels right and one that feels kind of weird. That's okay. Go pr predominantly the way that feels right. And then also go sometimes the way that feels weird. Ah, okay. Shake that out. Shake that out. Thymus thump. Oh, a little Tarzan moment. I think he was really on to something. Make some noise. Especially if it feels uncomfortable to make noise. Get comfortable with making noise and vibrating sound in your body. Okay, next place. We're back to the lymph. Uh, Cisterna Kylie. It's between your xiphoid process and your belly button right in the middle. Get in there. And that's deep into your body. So you can kind of like, if I kind of hunch around it, I feel like I'm squishing it in a few different ways. If I poke in, give it a squish. So we're thinking that those little lymphs were, lymph nodes or the bigger ones, we're moving them around. We're getting the tissue to free up anything that might be kind of blocking in there, stuck in there. We're getting it flushing through for our health. Lymph is a big detoxifier of the body along with our breath. Breath is a big detoxifier of the body. All right, next place, into the inguinal fold between your hip bone and your pubic bone. And again, you can also move here. If you look up lymphatic system on the internet and look at what, that, what the lymph nodes look like, you'll see where there are heavy concentrations or working in those areas. And this area is one. And then the next place behind the angle, uh, behind the knee, the eye of the knee, they say, you can bend and straighten as you're doing that if you wanna get in more. And then shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. Big shake out, <laughs> inviting any holding patterns, any tension in your body to let go. And while you're doing that also, waking up your access and your awareness of your kinesphere, the space around you, into the back space, the low space, the space behind you, the space above you, behind you, 
the diagonals, just waking up your awareness of this spatial component of being, right? We move through the space. The space moves through us. It's all there. And if we think of it as being really supportive, which it is, because if we didn't have space, where would we be and what would be inside of us? But also it's the relationship relationship of our bodies to gravity to the earth it's a really integral relationship so feeling some appreciation for that if you may taking it into a spiral twisting looking around behind you ha ah, we had a really hot day here yesterday it was in the 90s and now today it's in the 60s big spiral I've been trying to spend as much time outside as I can. So I've been doing a lot of gardening, a lot of walking, a lot of outside time. And in the Hudson Valley, that is, it's just gorgeous up here. It's wonderful to be outside. All right, let's come in. We're gonna do a couple more breath things before we do more exercise. So you're gonna inhale up, you're gonna exhale, push out, inhale up, Exhale. So it's kind of like you inhale and then there's a little hold. Exhale and we'll have a little hold. So inhale. Exhale. Little hold. Inhale. Exhale. Little hold. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Really pushing out, taking up that space. Let's do another one where we're gonna inhale up the front and exhale, push down to the earth. Inhale, push down, inhale, push down, inhale, inhale. Last one, inhale. Hopefully getting some more differentiated movement in our diaphragm, in our breathing apparatus in our rib cage, lungs and heart. Let's just move the pelvis around big circles, feet mobilizing on the floor. So you're getting your feet to move around. Jaw, neck and tongue relaxed, shoulders relaxed, easy body, as easy as it can be. I look like a lunatic. I look like a Muppet. That's all right. Change direction. Got to embrace the Muppet. Easy, relax, let it go. Here's the pea pod, which you can't see. You can just see her little tail. There she is. And then we're going to do ribs. So rib cage, we've just done all that breathing. Now let that diaphragm get this really jellyfish movement. So rib cage, lungs and heart, organs getting this stirring and change direction. So we want inside of our body, a lot of places to have sliding surfaces against each other, right? So within our body, there's this whole matrix of fascia that's really the organ of form holding us together, creating the structure of our body. And what we do helps form how that fascia uh, holds, connects, forms. And, and it's not like, oh, that's how it is and it never changes. It's this fluid organic system. It's super changeable. But when we change things in our in the way that we're holding tensions in our body, it's our nervous system and our fascia working together. Usually we wanna do that in a sort of slow manner, giving our body time, like quick changes in the fascia tend to be injuries. So we wanna be easy with that. But anytime we're doing this kind of fluid movement, we're just getting those organs inside, which most of them are really connected by sliding surfaces, connected or next to each other with these sliding surfaces. So we want that fluidity in those places. Let's take it down to the floor. All right, all the way down onto your back. Ah, come in for a landing. Just feel the, the growing and shrinking of the breath. So on the inhale, Imagine every cell in your body sort of radiating outward, opening up. And on the exhale, just sinking and releasing. So it can be active. You can grow away from center and then exhale, shrink in. 
shrink in sounds weird, but by shrink in, I don't mean shrink in and shrivel. I mean, just think into the earth. So this natural sort of internal pulsing of expansion and contraction, which is happening on multiple levels, right? The heart. So let's have a little free flow moment with this. The heart is pumping, the breath is going, or we could say, my heart is pumping, I'm breathing. Oh, the peapot is charging around. I can hear her in the rest of the house. She's very funny. She has these moments of like hyperspace, hyperdrive, charge back and forth. And often there is no actual toy she's playing with. Sometimes there is, but most of the time it's like she just has to go. So give yourself a little bit of rolling freedom, rolling around, finding this sort of growing and shrinking pattern. And it can also go in reverse. So I could inhale small and exhale big, radiating out. But what I'm really doing here, what I'm doing for my own body is rolling around and massaging out my back. That feels really good. And I'm also letting the tissue inside my body have this sort of natural sense of stretching and moving, a little free flow in the body. We very rarely, well, most people very rarely have an opportunity to really free flow unless you put, you play an instrument and you improvise or you dance and improvise. A lot of times we don't give our bodies this chance to just explore being a human body. So growing and shrinking with the breath is a great way to explore that using the map of the inhale to expand and the exhale, either to contract or to just release. Spent hours doing this in the Laban work, like growing and shrinking with the breath. And I highly recommend it as a way of tuning into the breath in your body and really imagining that the breath is moving through your body, which it is, right? It's moving through your blood. It's nourishing your body. It's also the blood is then carrying away the waste. So we're breathing in the oxygen. We're exhaling the CO2. All right, that's enough of that. Enough of that free flow. Let's go into a little bit more um, active work. But I want I want to stick with breath, and I want to do this uh, breath practice that I learned from Leslie Kamenoff. So what we're going to do is just go up and down a few times in any way, pelvis up and down in any way that feels good. You could add the arms or not. Just pressing up coming down, feeling into that push, pushing the floor away, we're turning back down to the ground, back body working, and you could roll it through your spine, vertebra by vertebra, or just press up. Right now, for some reason, it feels really good to do this with my arms up over my head. So again, there's a, a certain amount of free flow, if you need to be really specifically told what to do and you're watching this video, <laughs> don't you might want to stop right now and go to a different video. There are videos where I'm really specifically saying everything, but right now we're offering a little more freedom in your movement. All right. So now we're going to get into the Leslie version of this breath work. So I am going to show you my belly so you can see going to give us, if you've had breakfast, this is going to be a little bit weirder because we're going to go into a big sort of vacuum in our guts. So you're going to press up. You may want to watch it one time before you do it. And then from that press up, you're going to inhale, take a big breath so that your chest rises towards your chin. And then you're going to exhale part of that breath out, but keep your chest lifted towards your chin. And then you're going to exhale, roll it down vertebra by vertebra. When you hit the bottom, you're going to relax and then you're just going to breathe in again. Let's do it a couple more times. So coming up any way that feels good, pelvis somewhere between your knees and your shoulders. Take a big inhale, chest to your chin. Let it really lift up and then exhale some part of that out, two thirds, three quarters, and then roll it down. Thank <laughs> you. 
When you get to the bottom, really relax into the floor and then let the breath either fill up or maybe you need to exhale more. So whatever it is for you, just give yourself a shake. Let yourself feel into that. It might be kind of elusive, right? If you haven't done things that are sort of more on the subtle level, although this arguably is not very subtle, but if you're not used to working with this material sort of in a deeper way, it might feel like I'm not really doing anything. It's just that you haven't sensitized yourself to feeling your body that much. So that's just possible. All right, roll it up. We're, we're used to not really feeling anything until it's like intense. Well, for some people. Chest to chin. Exhale some of that breath out. Keep your chest lifted towards your chin. Roll down with the exhale held out. Ah, relax into the floor and then inhale whenever you're ready. All right, so that's just a way of tuning really into that squishy massage of the organs, but also like that vacuum packaging, which they really kind of are. There isn't, if, if your guts were pulled, if, if somebody cut you open across the front of your body, your guts would not spill out. It's not like the movies. You pretty, a lot of it would stay packed, nicely packed in there, unless somebody was really jamming. But even like with the, the uh, sausage links, they're not actually sausage links. They're connected to the mesentery, which is like this big sort of sea fan like uh, connection that's holding all of your organs in there, not all of your organs, all of your intestines in. It's connected the whole way, the sea fan holding all of those sausage links. So they're not <laughs> individually organized. They are completely anchored. All right. Knee drops from side to side. Let it go. Reality and the cartoons or the movies are often very far from each other. Let's take that a little deeper spiraling and reaching your foot across. Ah, finding some breath that feels good in your body. So I'm doing like both sides with one inhale for the whole thing and then one exhale for the whole thing. And then bring it in, feet on the floor, lift your pelvis up from there, easy circles with your pelvis, mobilizing, those sausage link organs without contracting and constricting in your abdominals, just letting them work as much as they need to, which isn't that much as you're making the circle, you're really working your back a lot more, change direction. Let your head and neck be free, relax your jaw. So we're going more for mobility here than for stability, mobilizing, working the muscles, working the fascia, greasing up those joints, ah, creating space inside the body. And just like letting everything internally massage and readjust in whatever way it needs to. Let's take a happy baby, open up, wiggle around, roll back and forth if that feels good. Let the baby really be whatever you need in your baby. What age do babies start doing happy baby? If you know the answer to that, write it down below in the comment section. I'm sure it's a little bit varied, but I feel like they do it pretty early. I feel like that's a, once, once the diaper changing gets going, right? I mean, which happens right away. So I don't know how soon they start to grab on. I don't know how soon they notice. And I know that every baby is different. All right, bring it in, inter feet wide, internally rotate one leg at a time, spiraling in. So we're really, if we, if we, <laughs> we're really working on this sort of tissue level of mobilizing and hydrating joints and soft tissues. And then come in and let's get a little bit more muscly. 
Um, and we also want to think that when, when I say muscly, it's really our whole body working together. It's the fascia, it's the muscles, it's the bones, it's the joints. Everything is working in a coherent manner, hopefully. Hands down by your sides, underneath your butt, legs up to the ceiling. I'm already going to go big because we've done so much warm up, so much tissue prep. So you could go small if you need to or big. I'm going to point up and then flex down. Pointing up. I'm flexing down. I am so ready to join the circus. This is really a good circus outfit, at least the pants. And if you wanna take this so that you roll up, you can do that. That is an option. Listening into your body, feeling what feels good for you today. Good, and then relax. Let it go, turn your head from side to side, free up your whole head tail connection. Free up the central channel, easy movement, nothing constricting yourself. Relax your belly, relax your guts. All right. Yeah, so I feel like um, what we're people are dealing with a lot today are these autoimmune issues where your own body is attacking itself. Ah, if we don't let ourselves down regulate, if we don't come into these coherent places on a regular basis where we're really working with our bodies in a gentle, loving, kind manner, it's very easy to have, you know, these autoimmune problems cascading on us. And I feel like I've had one my whole life. I've always, I've had like sort of this IBS situation, hands behind your head, knee to elbow crossing. Although when I stopped eating gluten, it became much more manageable. But when our own body is attacking itself, then we also, there's so many things we can look at. But what can we do to really support our bodies so that we can heal, right? So that we're not living whole lifetimes of attacking ourselves. Good, relax for a second. Drop your head, turn it from side to side. And that self-attack can be happening on multiple levels. It can be um, psychological, emotional, you know, physical. What, <laughs> our immune system can be attacking our system. So uh, the one thing that I'm always trying to do is come into more alignment with myself on this sort of body, mind, spirit level where I am taking care of myself and being kind to myself and not being too crazy with my behaviors. All right, let's flip over. I feel like we've been on our sides too long or on our sides, on our backs too long. So let's flip over, switch over to our sides. We're going to take the legs in front of us slightly. Pilates Pike, haven't done this in a long time. You're gonna bend your knee, reach forward, flex your foot, take it into the back space, point your toes. And here comes the squeaky deeks right in. Hello, leg forward, <laughs> flex, take it back and point. Coming through, point, flex. If anyone in this house has a foot fetish, it's that guy. But it's also because he doesn't like to be pet very much with hands. He's kind of a special child. He doesn't like to be touched very much. He's sensitive. So he likes to rub against your foot because then he can control how much stimulation he's getting. All right, let's take it. We're gonna change it. You're gonna to go toes to knee, reach into the back space, flex and arc forward. Point your toes, reach to the back, poke a hole, flex and arc forward. Yeah, and then the pea pod is also a little bit of a unusual, <laughs> unusual specialty herself. She is amazingly sweet, but also really kind of uh, high strung and twitchy. And whatever happened to her when she was a baby in the vets freaked her out with, with certain things. Like she doesn't like 
certain things to be done to her. She doesn't like to be picked up very much unless her feet are pointing down. She kind of, <laughs> she doesn't like to be picked up very much with by, like where she's on her back. She's fine if her legs are pointed down, but if her legs are up to the air, she is not happy. All right, let's cross ankle over knee and just drop from side to side. The mandusha of my cats is important to tell everybody, I'm sure. Um, and Peapod, just in case you don't know, is a Manx cat. Nobody cut her tail off, so that did not happen. She was born that way. Bring it in to center, and then you're going to pick up. You can straighten that bottom leg if you want. Draw it in towards you. Ah, breathe. Mm. Soften your inner body. Let go. And then shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. We're going to do a quad stretch. So come back onto that side, grab on, take it in. Heel towards your butt. If that feels good, you can internally and externally rotate from the hip socket a little bit. Squeaky. Squeaky dicky. Ah. Yeah, as I turn in and out, I can really feel the different sections of my quad, four quadricep, four sections, getting the stretch. Good, and then we're gonna also go with the this one, the big leg up stretch. So I'm gonna take my bottom leg more underneath me, top leg up. If you need to bend the bottom leg to balance, go for it. Grab from the inside of your leg so you're rotating so that hip socket has the capacity to go up more. If you're here, it's gonna be a little harder. But if you turn out the leg, get your sit bone down towards away from you, towards your other foot, should be able to get that leg up a little higher. Maybe not this high. Oh, breathe and open. Good, and then release. Give your leg a shake. Shake, shake, shake. Roll yourself back and forth, rolling through your spine. Letting it come to plow, if that feels good. And then we're gonna shift it around to the other side. I think I need to move just a little bit so that I am not duking it out with the cat tower. We'll see. All right, so coming down onto your side, Legs are going to go slightly in front of you, Pilates Pike, and pointed toes, passe in a parallel. Reach your leg forward, flex your foot, take it back, and point. Here he comes, right. Oh, oh. He's got a toy, but this one is too small for him to play with because he just got it stuck in his mouth. Hold on, I got to go get another one. Oh, I know. Carry on, passe, leg through. Flex and take it back. All right. Let's change direction. So it's going to go point, toes to your knee, take it back, flex your foot, arc forward. Long body, sorry for that. It's like, oh, the air is coming through. It's really nice. They opened that door. Yeah, these cats aren't distracting at all. All right. Taking it onto your back. I don't even remember exactly what we did. So I might do something different, but I think we did this. I think we did the fall from side to side, but maybe we didn't. I think I know what we did mostly. We're going to do the stretches in a second. And then coming in. Breathing into it. Ah, 
if you're feeling a sense of perfectionism and squishing or like contraction because of the perfectionism, see if you can just breathe and let that go. Ah, we're okay with things not being perfect. And then release that, give it a shake, 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 shake. Come back onto your side and bend your knees, stretch your quad. We're gonna internally, externally rotate there or not. You can also just hold it. You might be getting a good enough stretch as is. I'm gonna rotate in and rotate out because I really feel the tissue having this different stretch, different tensegrity, different stretch as it comes and goes, both of them. Look at this. Oh, Peepaw didn't go there fast enough. Did you miss out? All right, and then butt leg straight down below you, leg up over your wherever. Internally, sorry, externally rotate the leg up. It's gonna be slightly in front of you. Breathe into it. Good. And then release it, roll onto your back. Let's open up into a big straddle, lots of stretching today and just rock from side to side. Massaging through your hips and lower back. <laughs> it, I don't know if it's the wet, normally, so this thing keeps sticking to his mouth. So he comes in, he has to kind of shake it to drop it. That's why the little one had to be taken away. It's like, I don't need the cat stuck to his toy. All right, let's let that go and flip over onto hands and knees. Let's do big circles with your chest. So opening your hands wide, rib cage, lungs, and heart. Finding a breathing pattern that works for you and change direction. And it doesn't mean that it's staying in the same pattern all the time. It just keeps changing. All right, and then coming in, let's do opposite arm to leg. We're gonna stay with uh, the same diagonal for a while. So it'll be right arm, left leg. Stabilizing your torso for the first set, going one, two, three, four, long body, long back, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, switch it to the other side, one, two, three, four, five. Really reach through your fingers and toes, six, long body, seven, eight, nine, 10. We're gonna change it out to the side. So just the bent knee and arm one, right out to the side, let's do it this way, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other side. One, two, other diagonal. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Big circles with your hips, walk your knees back a little bit, just circling down towards the floor, reaching your butt back. And the other way, use your breath. Good, and then let's come into Let's come over the back of the hands, little monkey fists. In this position, round your spine, curl, and then curl your toes under and arch. Curl, 
and arch all the while making little fists. Curl and arch. And last one. Good. And then let's come up to fingertips. Just sinking down between your arms. So sinking and pushing. So it's not an arch and curl. Your spine is long, but you're sinking down. Shoulder blades are moving and you're pushing up and through. Sinking and pushing, sinking and pushing, sinking and pushing and sinking and pushing. And then coming up onto your knees, if that's okay, circles with your shoulders one way. If you need to stand, do that. Circles the other way. Good, and I'm just gonna shut this door again, which cut open because of the cat. You coming in? Come on, come on. Okay, and we'll do forearm plank to a forearm plank. Cross your hand under, take it into a side plank. Arm circle, let's go three in one direction three the other direction, follow your hand with your eyes, and then flip it over to the other side. Three in one direction, and three in the other direction, and come back to your forearm plank. One knee to the floor at a time, parallel going one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twisting underneath one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And take your pelvis down to the floor. Ah, melt. Bend your knees. Relax your feet. Windshield wipers. Massaging the front of your quads, relaxing your glutes, let go. And then let's go with hands next to your chest. Inhale, baby cobra, no hands, exhale down, using your breath. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. We're going to change it. You're gonna exhale up, inhale down. So take a deep breath in, exhale up, inhale down, exhale up, inhale down, exhale up, inhale down. How weird does that feel? Exhale up, inhale down. Changing it again, ah, exhale everything out, hands next to your chest, inhale all the way up, exhale down. Inhale, open, exhale down. Inhale, open, exhale down. Inhale, open, bend your knees, curl your toes under. Take it up to a downward dog. Bend one knee, bend the other, stretching out your calf and Achilles. Looking under your armpit, so maybe you get a little bit more into your hip. And you're gonna just bend both knees. Get into a tabletop and then butt to the ceiling, heels towards the floor. Tabletop, taking it forward, pushing back. Tabletop, taking it forward, really push, activate with your arms, push back. Head reaches forward, tail reaches back. Head reaches forward, tail reaches back. Two more. Head forward, tail back. Last one. Head forward, tail back. Oh, these earbuds, ear pods are having a battle with my shirt. All right, from here, taking your leg up as high as it can go, opening it out to the side, touching it down, reaching it up to the ceiling, and then bringing it behind you. Leg to the ceiling, carry it out to the side, drop it down, leg up and lower. Leg to the ceiling, carry it to the side, drop, lift, up and lower. One more, up to the side, drop it down, up to the back and lower. You could do this from your knees. Other leg, up 
carry it to the side and lower up to the back and down. Up, side, lower, up. Push with your arms. Drop the leg, three more to the side, lower, two more. Push with your arms, keep pushing, last one. And relax, bring it down. Ha. Ah. Interlace your hands together, pull your elbows so that your fingers are holding themselves together. Fingers are holding your hands, but you're actively trying to open them up. So actively pulling apart. Oh, yawn, turn your head from side to side, elongate your spine. And then you're gonna take your hands in and out, palms towards you, palms out, breathing into it, pulling open through the collarbones. Then push forward, come in, back of the hands and come in. My hands are still pulling away from each other or I'm still elbows trying to open out to the side. Push forward, back of the hands. So it's like palms of the hands, back of the hands, palms of the hands, back of the hands. And going over your head, up, palms of the hands, back of the hands, palms of the hands, back of the hands. One more time, each one. And then flamenco dancer, open it up. Arms, elbows, rib cage, lungs, heart, change direction to go back up. Neck, jaw, tongue, easy. Just shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. All right, well, let me look at the time. I feel like we've been going for a while, we have. So let's just end it with a big stretch in a straddle and then hamstrings. So opening up, taking it to one side, you're gonna, how am I gonna do this? Exhale toward the leg, inhale toward the ceiling. Exhale to the floor. Inhale, I'm opening up as I inhale, exhale, floor, inhale, open, exhale, floor, inhale, open, exhale, down, inhale, open, exhale, down, stay, breathe into it, walk it into center, push the floor away and come up. Ah, other side, taking it to the side, you're gonna round forward and then push the floor away, arch and open. Exhale, towards your leg, inhale, spiraling. Exhale, take it down. Inhale, open. Exhale, down. Inhale, open. Exhale, down. Inhale, open. Exhale, spiral. Use your lungs and this one, take it all the way down to your legs. Stay there, hang out, breathe. Walk it into center. And then push the floor away and come up and bring your legs together. And let's just uh, roll across your butt. So you're rolling across one and then the other butt cheek, massaging it out. You can stay on one and kind of move around so that you get some shear, like just letting the muscles in your glutes, your rotators, in your butt, around your butt, have some movement. So I'm gonna show it like this. I'm there, but I am moving. So the sort of, <laughs> tectonic movement of the plates of the muscles of my butt. Our muscles of our butt are not plates, but we could imagine them like that so that there's this sliding, shifting movement. And then let's take the legs forward, forward fold. Breathe into it, let go, soften and melt. And then roll it up. We're gonna do one thing standing before we finish. So you're gonna come up and you're gonna to come to a wall. And this is something actually that I noticed. So I've had that knee injury that's been kind of coming and going. It's not that bad, it's a lot better. I can pretty much do everything now. 
but it doesn't feel as strong. So I've looked at a lot of different uh, people online for how they rehab these injuries. And one of them is this, and actually this really helped me just to think about it. And that is you're gonna go against the wall. It doesn't have to be a huge, like your foot's maybe a foot away from the wall and you're just gonna flex up. So you're activating your tibialis anterior, the muscle in the front of your shin. And then you can bend your knees and take it down a little bit. Same thing. Straighten. Bend. I was doing this actually with us on the floor with uh, in those um, bridges before, but doing it standing is different. And it really made me think about walking. So if my knee starts bothering when I'm walking, if I flex more so that my heel is landing more and I'm not kind of whole footing it. So dancers sometimes use how to learn so much about using their whole foot that you could be walking like this, right? Where there isn't that flexion, throwing the leg out. And what I found is when I'm hiking, if my front of my knee starts to be annoying and hurt at all, if I work more with the tibialis anterior and like kind of flex and arc my foot forward and land on my heel, my knee then feels much better. So it's just things to think about as we get older. So many exciting things can be happening to your body. Inhale, open, 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 lift, reach it out and up. And then on the exhale, shake out anything extra. Shake out the baggage. Ha, <laughs> letting your body release whatever you gotta let go of. Inhale again, big breath. Imagine you're breathing in through your fingertips. Exhaling out through your fingertips or shake it to come down. One more big breath like that. Open and lift. Ha, ah, and exhale. And so what I found with my knee injury is that like, it's not a one thing situation. It's like, I got to do a little bit of this. I got to do a little bit of that. It helps me actually to stretch my quad. Um, deep flexion is a little bit of a problem, but not if I don't have weight on it. So I'm usually kneeling with one foot like this. This is the knee that's slightly injured. I can squat. I just can't spend a lot of time there. So it's like, you just want to listen into what is possible and then not push it beyond what is going to be helpful for you. So everyone in TV land, if you made it through to here, which somebody did, congratulations. Um, bravo or brava. Please do all the things that help my channel grow, which is pretty slow. 